Oh hey what's up guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to be talking about current state of guys masculinity in Japan. Especially, especially I'm going to be talking about emasculation or betatization of Japanese guys. Um, like when you imagine Japanese guys, how do they look you know, when you try to visualize them? Do they have longer hairs or shorter hairs? Or do they have? Do they usually dye their hot hair colors from natural black to maybe brownish, um, you know, lighter colors? Or how would you visualize Japanese typical Japanese guys' physique? Are they muscular? Are they skinnier? Are they a little bit chubbier, fattier, or skinnier? What do you think? And when it comes to visualizing their personalities, uh, general personalities, are they more passionate, like you know, kind of typical stereotypes of like Latin and Italian guys, or are they more studious and pretty serious, like you could imagine guys who are super hard, um, very disciplined to study, like typical Asian guys, like Chinese guys, or are they a little more hipster-ish? looking or what is your you know what is your uh, image impression of a Japanese guy's personalities and I'm gonna give you like I grew up in Japan for the first 20 years spent time in 20 years being exposed to Japanese medias and parents teachers friends um, movies stories TV shows Japanese advertisement which says Pretty much everything about being like gr growing up and being absorbed in like Japanese way of thinking because those ideas, um, belief systems, and mindsets are created through those stories, and movies, and TV shows and advertisements by people, a majority of people who are also conditioned by those medias, right? And then those ideas, ideologies, cultures get passed on to next generation after generations after generations. Uh, so if you don't pay close attention to where you got certain belief system or mindsets or ideas, then it is likely that you are living based on somebody's expectation or ideas constructed by most, most often by media's companies because there are ulterior motives and conflict of interest. For example, if you're watching movies or TV commercials, obviously uh, the conflict of inter interest exists between viewers like Japanese people and also companies who want to just make money. Movie as well. They just make a smash hit, splash the water, so they want to make a movie as relatable and acceptable by their audiences as possible. So uh, there are a lot of uh, ideas being manipulated, catered towards uh, certain kind of audiences. Uh, so with that said, uh, without further ado, I'm going to talk about guys. Um, current process, because I've been watching uh, North America, Western countries, especially English speaking countries, emasculation, uh, strong males, kind of alpha male type being bashed. By a lot of by current um, movement, also uh, extreme feminism, extreme by betatization by society, school uh, people, also victimhood, uh, victim mentality by a lot of like, you know, certain kind of people. Basically, they are complaining or they are basically casting a blame on certain people, and in certain cases, men or a little more strong men or aggressive men or confident men tend to be um, casted blame upon because kind of sometimes it's convenient. I'm not saying all the time and I'm not saying you know all the guys are innocent or all the guys are guilty or they are uh, they should be ashamed ashamed of their own like you know confident and masculine feature for themselves. But I'm saying that. Um, because I want to make this uh, video a little more generic and uh, more or less politically correct to cater toward the uh, general audience as well as protecting myself, you know, there's conflict of interest as well. Um, but yeah, 
um, in general though um, there are a lot of pressure to put on Japanese guys um, that beta-tization process or emasculation process even started before West Western countries so past 10 years maybe 15 to 20 years um, the social like media's rhetoric um, or their narrative is that strong and confident guys are evil and they're narcissistic so the, their their narrative is that if you are a guy and if you are confident and strong and macho and uh, exuding a little bit of confidence then you're gonna be perceived as narcissistic which doesn't necessarily mean always true right men and women are born different biologically that's a uh, innate feature it's like nature versus nurture but also in a modern society because we are going through socialize socialization since we are born we get uh, um, nurtured quality that current or that that modern society that you live in and the socialization part which is the uh, nurture nurturing part is also affecting how most uh, general guys and males behave in certain time in Japan and right now current given time um, based on the media's uh, narratives and rhetoric and what is going on around the world strong guys tend to be punished and shamed uh, you can observe that you can observe that quite a bit when you ask a Jap local like Japanese girls what kind of guys do you like what is your you know what's your type like what is the uh, qualities that you're looking for in Japanese guys and I've did uh, I've done an interview street interview with locals as well as I've grow I've I, I've grown up in Japan, so like I surrounded myself with Japanese people, right? So between just not just from females' opinion, but also from males' peer opinions, which is you need to be careful and aware that those opinions are also influenced and uh, formed by exposure to media and the public and socialization, which is nature, not the nature. Um, the general opinion is that it's better to be beta, it's better to be soft, and it's better to be agreeable, it's better to be likable by everybody, it's better to be polite and not assert your own opinion or assert what you want. Um, basically, everything opposite of being assertive, being dominant, being confident. Um, so, what, what does he say about it? Basically, that's what's happening in Western countries past three to five years compared to like let's say 20 like two decades ago a few decades ago especially with the, this whole like feminism movement as well as um, this victimhood mentality of like casting all the blames on males or let's say um, you know basically there's even a TV show called uh, Silicon Valley right and then there's a I just watched a YouTube video about how that there was a news that frontline news was glorifying kind of typical what beta male looks like because they have less aggressive features, they're softer and uh, basically the, there's a conflict of interest between you know males and females and basically those feminine like extreme feminists out here want to have those beta males um, they, they basically want their you know desires to be catered by those beta males because it's easier to control um, and also schools and teachers and moms you know father less food environment is contributing to the fact that guys or males don't know how to let's say be a more assertive and then dominant and then how to lead um, anyways uh, so in Japan yes you need to be soft you don't want to be obviously be you don't want to appear like you're a little bit too confident because it's pretty sensitive there pretty over sensitive I would say people get hung up on or get triggered um, it's pretty easy for many even guys as well there's a peer pressure among guys they're like watching out for each other and then like if guys are a little bit self confident too like confident and assertive and if that way they talk is a little too like eloquent or you know 
if he's starting on his own feet and uh, like like basically I'm talking about all the attributes that you can describe as confidence then guys and girls are gonna start telling you like oh like you are a bit too much into yourself like too much of yourself like oh you're narcissistic like oh he loves himself too much which is a direct uh, translation of the Japanese word jibun uh, you are too you know you you are the direct translation of that Japanese phrase is like oh you love yourself too much like what's the point like you know what's what is the point of not loving yourself and hating yourself this is your life and you live your life only once but Japanese whole mentality is being humble and also being um, um, self-deprecating which is I don't think you know doing any good favor for their own personal happiness it is obviously doing good favor for a group and society because everybody's uh, watching of, uh, everybody's um, being pretty sensitive about pretty sensitive about uh, other people's needs that's why people care a lot about uh, people care a lot about what other people think about them because yes if you're crossing a little bit of boundary if you're um, so if you're like people are so over sensitive about not to um, not to how do I say not to like being polite but like try not to be polite impolite to other people um, I don't know it's 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 kind of like people are putting other people holding other people accountable for their own feelings so it's kind of these days yes in a western society where kind of snowflakes are holding other people's accountable for their own emotion because they feel like oh I'm oppressed or like oh I'm like I'm offended so in Japan people like so 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 scared about offending people even just a slight thing and people hold other people responsible for their own feeling and people are really scared a little bit like freaked out about not offending other people and so they take like five extra steps to not do that and that's why you say like you see this uh, uh, behavior where ja every Japanese people who are just starting to learn English they you know every you know, every 10 seconds they're gonna say oh sorry oh sorry same thing like a Chinese I, I noticed that too or a Korean typically like an Asian uh, if it's Eastern Asian people, they have this mentality and also humbleness and self deprecation and uh, basically they don't, they don't wanna. So, this like a betaization and the email situation applies to China and Korea and Japan. Pretty similar based on my observation of TV drama movies and how society and girls fantasize like a beta male, like a nice beta male, agreeable, or likable, and easy to control. And they definitely punish strong, assertive, and masculine, dominant guys. You know what? Because it's kind of like they're shaming those guys, people. Uh, they're putting cast on, putting, casting blames on those people. And they, yeah, of course, because, you know, they are looking for their own interests right now. And oftentimes, um, it's easier to have agreeable, nice guy, orbiters around yourself so that you can, they can cater your needs. Like, oh, shopping, oh, can you pick me up for, you know, shopping or like a night after a night out, the night club or bar or, or just uh, to, to have a shoulder to climb on. And by, see, like, what they want and what they desire and what they really want based on their instinct attraction is instinct right like hunger or fatigue um, attraction is instinct it's being carried over past two million years over a thousand generations of past uh, uh, ancestors it's part instinct it's part emotion and other part is socialization and the nurturing and actual decision like logical like conscious choice and in these days modern days a lot of socialization and uh, uh, cultural uh, cultural social programming take place in that decision making attraction and then that's why people nobody knows what they really want because 
current age, people think like, oh yeah, like I want a nice guy with like the money, and uh, I wish uh, he can be super nice, blah blah blah. Like, that's what I hear from Japanese people, and guys are terrified about being shamed as like you know, self-centered, narcissistic, and a strong and a masculine guy. Basically, it's a lot of shaming going on. It's been around even before this uh, whole emasculation and bitterization happened in Western society. It's been 10 years and I was so freaked out about the uh, whole like, shaming culture, like emasculation like, you know, thing that, that I observed through uh, a bunch of movies and uh, TV shows, entertainment where they discuss and then guys are just so scared about being pointed a finger at and uh, it's, it, it works as a whole, like a group, right? So group thinking, that's where it gets pretty scary because they're, they're more of the coming from gatherers, not the hunters. So they're more, they're, they're, they, they, their reputation in the group matters more than their own individualism. Um, so if you're screwed, your status, reputation, you're gonna pay a lot of price for that. So that's why, like in a company, they tend to be much softer passive passive agreeable yes man because it's kind of a, you don't want to be ostracized by this their tribe or whatever organization that they are called family relatives friends in school and company university you know everything is like the the, the sense of group and the tribal ship is really strong there you need to watch out for what you do and what you say even more than like more individualistic countries in the Western societies. So that, you know, I've I've pointed out a lot of facts that led to current state of, uh, you know, masculinity in Asia, especially Japan. But basically, a lot of stuff are coming from um, media, uh, current modern age uh, dominant way of thinking and the rhetoric and the narrative is to basically be politically correct, you know? And being politically correct means always supporting the weak, babies, others, elders, and uh, women. Like, physically, they are weaker than males. In that sense, it is easy to protect um, women, females, than males, and yeah, that's why there are a lot of false, uh, false accusations of sexual harassment in a public transit. And yeah, a lot of males' lives are destroyed by that. And then this is not just in Japan. It happens in the United States too, right? That false rape accusations, whatever. And, and then females, it's the society's whole narratives. Oh yeah, if that was actually really false accusation, the whole like, you know, sentiment is like, oh yeah, it was good that she wasn't raped. Well, don't worry about screwing up one guy's life. That's kind of like a general like sentiment that I get from like you know false accusation thing because yeah, a lot of issues between females and males. Both are equally important and obviously um, a lot of bad guys are weirdo and the pervert in Japan so I have no um I don't think there's a room to sympathize those guys who are committing actual crimes, but at the same time, the whole society, and even guys, right, even guys and police officers, and also, also in the court, the whole system are against males, like strong males, because you don't know, think about the child custody or like divorce, half of the asset of the guys are taken by females, child custody, guys wouldn't be able to keep it no matter what, most likely. You have no chance to have a uh, child custody, even if you're a guy and you don't have any uh, problem with raising kids, it's they favor females, no matter what. Even if females are like, no, unless the wife is like extremely like, alcoholic or like have like physical violence, uh, yeah, if wife cheats on you and she wants to divorce with you, she's gonna still get uh, child custody how sad and miserable that life would be as a guy. Um, a lot of stuff, uh, so definitely um, kind of resembles uh, emasculation state 
in North America, like Western society, but Japan started happening like 15 years ago and felt like, yeah, their whole society is glorifying beta males and a soft and agreeable, likable attributes while while attractive girls are complaining about oh I haven't I can't meet a real strong and confident guys and then they keep those nice guys as orbiters while getting cheated on or having bad experiences with bad boys because that's what the instinct tells them to go for. You know, instinctually they look for strong and masculine and, and assertive guys because they have those attributes to protect uh, females in a bioevolutionary standpoint but logically socialization part nature versus nurture nurture part tells them that they want they think they want nice guys um, based on you know probably eluded from media exposures like movies and TV commercials like Disney fantasy right so yeah that's about it current state of guys like emasculation process in Japan pretty bad that I felt like and pretty uh, oppressed or I felt uh, constantly being shamed by uh, I mean just watching TV shows uh, advertisement I see everywhere even celebrities if they're being shackled by those ideas they're mentally shackled by those shaming uh, blaming um, and everyone's scared but before you know you stop questioning that there's even shame going on they stop questioning oh this is weird they start swall swallowing everything, and uh, I was I was lucky that I got out of the system. I kind of freed myself from those ideas and ide ideologies. Uh, ulterior motives definitely for sure ingrained. Um, so I was able to kind of keep my critical thinkings and awareness, and then started expanding my awareness by reading more and more books and experiences. And it comes, you know, it came out that. Um, this didn't just happen in Japan or China, Korea, Asia, but Western countries as well. It's just a, a just a process of modern postmodernism, you know, beta beta-ization, emasculation, feminism, uh, liberalism, uh, free speech, uh, but silencing the non-conforming ideas. It's kind of like you know, um, contradicting to free speech, um, left, right, this whole. It all, I think, comes down to uh, a little bit of common, uh, common deno denominator is the victimhood mentality, uh, casting blame on others, and also misunderstanding what is the actual root cause of all the issues. And uh, so, yeah, I uh, just wanted to get this out from my mind because it kind of bothered me a lot. When I was seeing the Japanese guys, it's that representation of social conditioning, social programming, and shaming, uh, blaming put on males. That's why they look so like soft and agreeable, likable, apologetic, longer hair, skinny, and kind of feminine, neutral, gender neutral looking guys are typically like Asian Japanese, typical Japanese one. Think about the gaming nerds, right? And this is, there's no surprise, no wonder. Uh, there's a you know sexless culture in Japan because of betatization and shaming for the kind of alpha male strong males are happening that's why people like guys lose motivation to be strong and then take responsibility because they're shamed upon you know like traditional men um, so yeah sexless culture is related to this betatization in society it's killing the country it's killing the entire planet kind of you know Western societies strong men are being killed you know um, so it's it was happening before western societies in Japan this sex, sexless issue is like being around for like 20 years and like it's sad guys like being soft and they they better cut their dick off and then feel like you know they're like gender neutral they'd rather dress up like probably gender neutral put uh, even more process further into the process would be like they put makeup on uh, they dye their hair and then what they start uh, I don't know just uh, become a gender neutral um, yeah it's so sad to see Japanese guys like all like homogeneous looking all of them like all of them look like the same like you know, fashion styles and hairstyles like how strong that social conditioning is how strong that 
problem in social socialization processes is, especially in homogeneous countries like Japan, Korea, China. Anyways, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Until then, hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye.